Okay, character perspective. We talked about it yesterday. What a character believes to be true. Doesn't have to be true, but the character believes it is true, right? And so we're gonna be asking ourselves that. What does the character believe to be true? And we have to find evidence. And this is our question for today. Mrs. Bissinger, or Mrs. B, tells Francine that there is a shimmery raccoon on her roof who calls her name. But Francine just says, write the address, okay? Okay, write the address. And so the question is, why does she say that? Why does she just go write the address? And you've got to think about what she believes, what she knows, um, something she realizes, something she understands. You've got to think about her perspective. So what we're going to do today is we are going to reread the first chapter and the whole time you're trying to think about why she just says, right, give me the address, give me the address, thinking about her perspective. Francine thinks it's no rat no real raccoon on her roof. Okay. Okay, Francine thinks there is no real raccoon on her roof. Great. You answered it. You answered the question and now we're going to do the evidence a bit later. Okay. Um Tajay, go ahead. Thank you for your answer. Great. So I think there are some really great answers up here. I don't it's not about if you agree, it's if they have a perspective in there, okay? So Jamila said Francine thinks there is no real raccoon on her roof. Thumbs up if it has a perspective, thumbs down if it does not have a perspective. There is a perspective in here. How do you know? I know because when you just capture perspective, you have to think, you have to um, use what the capture is thinking inside their head. You just nailed it. Next one. Francine needs the address so that she can come. She can't help without the address. Is there a perspective in there? Why do you think a perspective is not in there? Why do I think a perspective is not in there? Because it's not showing what, what she believes. Mm, it's not showing what she believes. Okay, so let me come to you, Tajay. What do you think? Do you think it shows what she believes? Taja, great job analyzing your own response. I just want to point this out. This is really important. Sometimes it's hard for us to analyze our own response and say, actually, no. And Taja is really mature and in her mind, she's like, huh, no, I didn't include the perspective. Interestingly, Taja, I agree with you. She does need the address to come and she can't help without the address. That is absolutely true, but we're trying to get her perspective, okay, on why she's just like, okay, okay, give me the address. So Tajay, think on that and I'll come back to you, okay, for your perspective. Okay, Tajay, um, you ready, sweetheart? <laughs> okay, go for it. Uh, first thing, things that is not really a ghost raccoon because she's probably thinking that it's, uh, not, um, it's not probably a real thing as a ghost raccoon. One and two. If you see evidence that you want to put in for your answer, all you do is give me that thumbs up and I will come to you for your, your evidence, okay? So skim it from top to bottom and see if it helps to prove your response on pages one and two. There might be evidence for you. There might not be evidence. There's a lot of pages. So go ahead and skim and see if you want to add any evidence from here. Great evidence here. But Christopher, you saw some evidence. What do you like, sweetheart? First thing, have one manny. Trophies, 47, 47 of them to be exact. Great. So Christopher, look, look, look what I'm going to do. I am going to take your piece of evidence. Francine had won many animal control, 47 to be exact. I'm going to take your piece of evidence and I'm going to put it in your answer. Okay. So let me get that a little bit smaller so we can see. Okay. All right. Great. Okay, let's keep it moving. We're going to evaluate the evidence. Uh, Jamila, read it to me, please. It say, um, there are no ghosts, said Francine, and there are no ghosts of raccoons. Okay, so let me snip that for you, and go ahead and put it in your box. There are no ghosts 
and there are no ghosts of raccoons. And Jamila wants that piece of evidence, so we'll put that there. And we'll just make it a little bit smaller. There we go. Um, I see some people agreeing. Um, give me a thumbs up if you want that in your box. Too. Friends, you're doing amazing. So let's go in and let's evaluate our evidence. So what we do right now is each, each box, you have to ask yourself, does the evidence prove the inference? And so that's all I'm going to ask right now is if there's evidence to prove the inference. So this is just thumbs up or basically thumbs down, I think we should be able to say. So for Jamila, here's her evidence. There are no ghosts and there are no ghosts of raccoons. A talking ghost raccoon? I don't think so. Does that evidence prove the perspective that Francine does not believe there is that a raccoon on her roof that can do all those things? And three thumbs ups. Okay, Jamila, you got evidence to prove it. All right, so here we go. Here are Jordan's answers. Perhaps you were not listening. This is not your average raccoon. There, and then another piece is, there are no ghosts and there are no ghosts of raccoons. Do those two pieces of evidence prove that Francine believes there is no ghost raccoon? She thinks it's a normal raccoon. Thumbs up both pieces, thumbs to the side, one piece proves it, thumbs down, two pieces, they both don't prove it. Okay, uh, talk to us please, Christopher. Christopher thinks one piece proves it and one piece doesn't prove it. But wait, Christopher, don't go yet. Don't go yet. Um, Jordan, I want to ask you first. Um, how are you feeling about your answer? Are you feeling both pieces prove it, one piece proves it, or no pieces prove it? He's okay. Christopher's saying both pieces. Christopher, you say, sorry, Jordan is saying both. Christopher's saying, mm -mm, there's one that proves it and one that doesn't. Go ahead, Christopher. The one that proves it is <laughs> there are no ghosts. There are no ghosts. And there are no ghosts of, of records. And the part that we don't lose is perhaps we're not losing. So you should check out the one at the top. Okay, Christopher, let me summarize what he said. He said, this piece does not prove it. Perhaps you were not listening. This is not your average raccoon. It doesn't prove that Francine believes there's no such thing as a ghost raccoon. He says, but the second piece is really nice. It does prove that. So, Jamila, what do you think? I think one piece proves it because the pieces proving it is um the first piece or the second piece? The second piece. Okay, so you're on the same page with Christopher. Okay. The second piece proves it or the first piece proves it? I think it's the second. Okay, the second. So now let's go back to our friend Jordan. Jordan, what are you thinking? You've heard everybody really likes this piece of evidence, but they're not convinced on this. What do you think? I think I think I want to read back because it really it really doesn't show how she believes that it's not a real raccoon. You want me to get rid of it? Okay, Jordan, really nice, flexible thinking. Really just like Tajay, you listened to your friends and you said, okay, let me change this because you guys made it. So friends, let's talk about what we've done that's been so great. What we've done that's been so great is we started and we all got a great perspective down with thinks and believes. And then we found evidence, but we narrowed our evidence to the best evidence. Final thing I wanna to do today is see if any vocabulary words could make our answer stronger. I wanna focus here on uh, Christopher's, okay? So Francine thinks this is gonna be easy. Let's see if we can put in any kind of character trait um, to help us with her perspective about why. This is gonna if you think one of these will work, give me a thumbs up. If you don't think any of them work about Francine, thumbs down to help explain why she thinks it's gonna be easy. Bold, a person who is confident, courageous, willing to take risks. Fearless, a person who is not afraid to take risks or do something that's scary. Confident, a person who believes in his or her abilities. Arrogant, a person who thinks or acts like he or she is better than others. That's it.
Okay, arrogant, confident, fearless, bold. Does anybody think those would fit? Anybody think those would fit? Um, Jamila, what do you think, sweetheart? Um, I think fearless will describe Francine. So now the perspective is Francine thinks this is going to be easy because she is fearless and bold. What do you guys think? Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Friends, you did such an incredible job. And we are.